co-ops are game changers, right? Co-ops are more than just grocery stores with social goals. That's somebody else. Co-ops are places where good things happen and we just happen to sell groceries to do it, right? But how does that happen? And who's behind achieving impact? I like to think of co-ops as being designed with opportunities for people to be part of the process of moving progress forward. It's more broad than just voting for the board. It's about contributing our knowledge and our skills and our voice and our charm and our talents so that we have opportunities to participate at any given moment at any given time when we're at the co-op. So my role in the consulting world is a little bit new and a little bit unusual, unique. You could kind of say that I'm a co-op relationship expert. Um, more officially, I'm a power of participation consultant. And what my job is, is to help co-ops fine tune their operations so that people are given more choices at the co-op to participate in fun and inspiring and easy ways. I kind of make sure that everyone has a place at the co-op and that they can do something so that the, the co-op can do the special things that it does. And where that work starts is with those roles that help the co-op to achieve impact. And we've, in our power of participation work, have identified six roles. And each of those roles has its own perspective and experience within the co-op. And all of those roles have relationships with one another. And the co-op affects them, creates impact on them, and they create impact on the co-op. And the first role are our owners. And as we know, owners provide input and feedback. The co-op wants to know what the owners are thinking. And the co-op is a transparent and communicative place for owners. And the owners participate both financially and democratically. They give equity, they lend, they vote. And we should think about owners distinctly from shoppers, right? They may be some of the same people, but they participate in a different way. Shoppers are the people who interact with the store, and the store provides the shoppers a welcoming store experience. And the co-op feels impact from the shopper through their patronage, right? Through the revenue that the shopper provides when they shop. And the shopper gets impact through all of the cool activities that they get to experience when they go to the, to the shop. And some examples of that might be when they get to sample, or when they get to go to a demo at the store, or when they see how many local purchases they've made on their receipts, or when they get to meet a local vendor at a co-op event. And there's no shame in being a shopper. We respect that diversity, and we acknowledge that not everyone's a joiner. The next role, a particularly important role, in my opinion, is our staff. And the staff is the face of the co-op. They're the connectors between the mission and the organization and the shoppers and the owners. They're the ambassadors of the co-op. And the relationship that they have with their owners and the shoppers of the co-op is tremendously important. And when staffers find meaning in the work that they do, and when they're appreciated for that work, that impact is felt across the co-op. Then we have our, our GMs. 
Our GMs are our voice of leadership. They're strategic. They're competitive. And the GM also provides the resources necessary for staff to have those really important relationships with staff and provides those resources for them to have meaning in their, in their work and be appreciated. The GM is also the advocate for the co-op. And then we have the board. The board provides the clear vision for the future of the co-op. And the board has open, communicative relationships with both the GM and the membership. They seek knowledge and wisdom. And the board also thinks about our members. They think about current member needs, but they also think about future members and future member needs as well. And of course, they always seek input from the ownership. And because of this, there is a trusting relationship between the ownership and the board. And the ownership is really enthusiastic about the democratic process. And then finally, we have community. The community as a role in this particular instance is sort of that space in which the co-op exists. And the community acts as a strategic partner for those mutual goals that the co-op wants to achieve. And the co-op acts as the anchor business that does the right thing within the community. And the co-op also acts as an advocate for the community. So th those are the six roles that we are sort of going to be talking about this afternoon. And that's, the, that's where I start with my work with co-ops. So let's look at some examples of how, how these roles sort of look in action in some co-ops that are doing this participation work. So the first one is River Valley Co-op in Northampton, Massachusetts. And they have a green stamp program. And it's really cool. You get one stamp if you ride your bike to the co-op or if you bring a shopping bag. And 10 stamps equals a full card. And you can either cash that in for merchandise or cash, or you can donate it to the nonprofit of the month, which the membership votes on. And it's kind of cool because being rewarded is something that the staff really enjoys being messengers to the owners too. It's fun. The next one is Weaver Street Market. And they have um, sort of turned the annual meeting on its head into this cool new event called the Co-op Fair. And basically what they've done is they've opened their doors to um, tours and tastings and board members are there to talk to owners in person. Um, and on top of that too, they also talk about projects and goals that they have in mind. So it's this really cool opportunity for owners to get to really understand what's going on at the co-op at this really personal level. The next one is Hanover in Hanover, New Hampshire. And they've been a community advocate and partner for the 80 plus years that they've been in existence. And in 2015, their local purchases were $14 million, which was 21% of their total local sales. Um, they also donated 98 tons of unsellable produce through a nonprofit that was actually created by one of their staff members to local food banks. And um, they give eight hours of volunteer time every year to their staff, paid, paid time for staff to volunteer, which is really cool. And then the last example that I have is Friendly City Food Co-op, which is in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And um, their thing is customer service. They're very big on that. And going above and beyond customer service is a big deal. And they have it written in every job description, not just high contact roles. And um, a cool thing that the GM and marketing department did for their staff to appreciate them was set up a chill out lounge during the Thanksgiving Christmas rush, where they took the meeting room and they took out all the furniture and they put down yoga mats, <laughs> dim the lights, aromatherapy, smooth jazz, and snacks. And that was the place where everybody got to go to chill out in between all of the turkey 
Christmas chaos. Um, so think about your role at the co-op and also think about people in other roles and share yourself and appreciate others, um, you know, because working together is how we make great things happen. <laughs>